This shows where the parasternal short axis view at the level of the aortic valve cuts through the heart. This is our probe and you can see the ultrasound moving into the heart. The first structure it encounters is the right ventricular outflow tract. Behind it will be the aortic valve and the left atrium. So now we're going to scan in the parasternal short axis views. So whereas my notch was pointing towards my patient's right shoulder in my long axis views, I'm now going to rotate my probe round like this and so that it's going to be pointing at the left shoulder. So what I usually do is I usually start back in the parasternal long axis view. So I'm in the same position as I was, fourth intercostal space, left side of the sternum. And then I rotate round watching the picture on the screen. So I'm rotating slowly round about 90 degrees so that I'm pointing now at the left shoulder. So that's a, a nice view through the left ventricle in the short axis view, but I want to start off with my aortic view, my aortic parasternal short axis view. So I'm going to angle up very, very slowly, tiny movements. I'm going anteriorly and I'm going up, 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 keep going, keep going, up, up, tiny movements. So I bring in, there you can see, aortic valves coming in there beautifully. So what we've got here, we've got the circle this circle here is the aortic root, and you can see the cusps of the aortic valve in the middle there. And then this is a diagram of the parasternal short axis view at the aortic valve level. And as we know, our probe is up here, so our first structure we see is the right ventricular outflow tract. Then we see the aortic valve behind it, and a closed normal aortic valve looks like this. So it's like the inverted Mercedes sign, or a Y. This cusp is the right coronary cusp, and we know that because we know the right structures are the ones we're insinating first in this view. We've actually got the right coronary artery coming off here. This is the left coronary cusp, and this is on the left as the patient lies on the bed. And you can see the left coronary coming off here. And then the other cusp is the non-coronary cusp. Behind it, we have the left atrium, and here we have the right atrium. And so this structure here between them is the interatrial septum. So hold this view in your head, and we'll see it in a real patient. So in the parasternal short axis view, at the level of the aortic valve, we're looking to see the aortic valve within a circle. If it goes a bit oval, it means we've, we've gone off, off axis. So to look at the structure and the function of the valve in this view, I will optimise my circle. And if I'm not sure that I'm on it properly, I will go back to my parasternal long axis view and start again. better. So I can see th thin cusps there opening well. I can see them closing in the position of the Mercedes sign. There we are. And what I'll do is put some colour here just to see whether there's any aortic regurgitation. I didn't see any in the other view but I can't see any here either. The other valves I see in this view are the tricuspid valve is over here and the pulmonary valve over here. So there's a lot going on in this view, so we're going to have to spend quite a lot of time looking at it properly. So this is a nice view for looking for tricuspid regurgitation. We're quite well lined up here for Doppler flow. So I'm looking at forward flow through the valve is red up towards the screen. I, mean, I can't really see any TR. There may be a tiny flick, but nothing I could possibly try and measure. That all looks normal. So now I'll go over and have a look at the pulmonary valve. And as before, we see the little tiny jet of pulmonary regurgitation up there at the valve, and then nice laminar flow into the main pulmonary artery. And then the bifurcation, we can just about see there. Actually, that's quite nice. We can see the bifurcation of the two branches. So more to look at in this view. There's the interatrial septum. So that's this structure here. So we've got the left atrium here and the right atrium there. So we could look at the septum, see whether it's thin, whether it's particularly mobile. Pictures aren't perfect here, but we could put colour and we could check whether there's a PFO or an ASD there. The structure up at the top is the right ventricular outflow tract. So we can look at the wall there. It may not be particularly useful. Um, and the other structure we may see in this view is SVC coming in to the right atrium. 
and we'll notice that as a surge of colour. See that red colour there, this, this coming into the atrium, that's SVC flow. It's important not to confuse that with ASD flow. So that's SVC into the right atrium. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.